Maxwell's calculations, uh, whenever he did these calculations, all about waves and stuff like that. And then, oh, I don't know, about 70 years ago, someone discovered something called the moment method, which is a method of taking an antenna, right, cutting it into lots of pieces and doing lots of iterative, very complicated calculations. And you take those calculations and you can understand how an antenna is working. There we are. Years later, somebody put that into a software package and now we can run simulations based on the principles of Maxwell's equations and the moment method. So if we take an antenna, and I'll, I'll take any antenna, we'll take a vertical for the moment because a vertical is just half a dipole. We've just got one side to think about. So I'll just make sure you can see what I'm doing here. Let's take a vertical and I'll just draw this, just a vertical on the ground, okay? And I always do this just in case you're unsure, a piece of coax comes along, the center of the coax goes up the pole or up, up the vertical, and then the braid of the coax, which we'll put in purple, this is the braid of the coax, that becomes our ground plane, our, our radials, the, the other side of the uh, circuit, if you like. So imagine this is quite tall. We'll make it about 30 feet, about 10 metres. It doesn't really matter exactly, right? But let's just say we are 10 metres high, approximately, OK? We're not doing something called end effect today, and that will determine the length. But right now, we're just into sort of imaginary stuff, OK? So 10 metres, approximately, that's going to be resonant on about 7.2 megahertz uh, 7 7.2 6.9 doesn't matter right around about what they call the 40 meter band now then what maxwell and the moment method predicted is that uh, for a dipole or a vertical every third harmonic will be resonant again okay so that 7.2 is also going to resonate at 21.6 now Years ago, I developed a technique because, and we'll do an end effect another day. I've got it in the plan to do. So if you want to watch that, you have to bookmark the channel, hit the subscribe button or something so you can re watch that when that one comes out. But effectively, we discovered what happens is it's not 7.2 times 3 is 21.6. Something, again, we'll cover it on the end effect. It's going to be more. So it's going to be a little bit more. Let's say it's not 21.6, it's 21.9. Let's say 9, okay? So 9 is actually a little bit too far out, right? We want this ideally not even at 21.9. We want it down at about 21.25-ish because that's one of the amateur bands. So how do we do that? Now, with a technique I developed was and i didn't know it at the time and it's something to do with end effect is that we made this a little bit shorter let's say instead of 10 meters we'll make it i don't know 9.2 and we'll load the top of it so it still works on our frequency with this little fold over but we're doing a little trick and what happens is we go down from 21.9 to 21.25 or whatever and it's all to do with this fallback. And I didn't quite know how that worked, what was going on or anything else. So I'm going to do some research because what I wanted to know is what happens when we put a coil in a vertical. So we'll start off again. We'll put this vertical um, down there. And we've got some radials as before. And luckily for us, the moment method is fairly accurate across all software packages and it'll tell us roughly, all right, it's highly complex maths though, that's the only thing, roughly what's gonna happen if we put a coil. So let's now, for instance, instead of making it 10 meters tall, we're gonna cut the top off like this and we're gonna make it now, the total length is gonna be seven meters in height. Now, we can still get this 7 metres working as a 10 metre 
uh, antenna because and we do this on the rapid okay it's an antenna and we put a little this wire comes up and we put a little coil in here there's the coil and that gives us some inductance and other odds and ends not go into right now but that coil all right it means that even though it's seven meters tall that coil means it can still operate at on or about 7.2 megahertz right so far so good then i discovered that when we apply this coil and by the way that when i say a coil all i mean is a wire comes up and it's just an air spaced coil and then it carries on again all right and you might have seen that like on a cb antenna things like that a coil affects where the next harmonic is and i've done some really complicated spreadsheet work here uh, along with the moment method and Maxwell's calculations. So this was a 7.8 meter long pole. And I was just putting a one micro Henry and a two micro Henry and a three micro Henry at various places along this pole here to discover when the next harmonic is. In the main, it all stays around a factor of three OK, until we start moving the coil further up the pole. So if we took this coil on the 40 meter rapide and moved it up here, we would find that the third harmonic would move. And what happens if the harmonic comes down? OK, so let's say we've got 7.2 instead of being uh, 21.6, that harmonic would go down 20. 18 17 16 and so on so i'm measuring here for instance 2.04 this line here i worked out that a 10 micro henry coil on a seven meter pole give or take will give us a resonant frequency of 8.7 and a harmonic at 17.8 which is a factor of about two because two 87s are approximately 178 give or take because if we can find the magic number, because at the moment, if you see, we've got a big gap here where we're not resonant, ideally on 14.2, give or take, all right? Because that 14.2 is twice 7.2. That'd be 14.4 if, exact, if it was exactly twice, wouldn't it? But wouldn't it be marvellous to be able to create an antenna that was slightly short on the 40 meter band but was also resonant on 14. i don't know another antenna that can do this right so let's take a seven meter pole we'll put a very specific coil exactly the right place here okay and theoretically we should be getting 7.2 and 14.2 now i've done some basic modeling on this um using the the moment method with a really piece of, a really simple piece of software called mmana so this where that x is on the screen which is quite high up is a 40 micro henry coil what does a 40 micro henry coil that high up by the way well if you're a metric man if you took a 25 millimeter diameter tube which is about one inch and made it i don't know how long yet and took some quite thin wire, about 2.4 millimeters, right? 130 turns around there is about 40 microhenries. So this little tube, and I was imagining what we could do because we've got a little upper spreader here on the top of the rapide. Take this little tube, we could slide it over the top. And all of a sudden by magic, what would happen is we'd be resonant on the 40 and a 20 meter band. So let me just run this at roughly 7.2 megahertz. Ignore the SWR, it says 1.95. I'm not too worried about that. That's easy to tune out. And we've got a far field plot that looks like this. And if you remember, if I just drive down here to 175 degrees off the horizon, which is five degrees off the horizon, I would expect normally to see a gain of about minus five. In other words, very low angle, Am I, am I still in the minus five region? It says here minus 
And if I now move to 14 point, I don't know where this is resonant in, in software. Let's have a look. It says the SWRs here is 1.49. I go to the far field plot there and spin down again. I'm getting minus six. So there's a little bit of loss. I'm one dB out, but I'm on the third harmonic. All right, because I'm now this single antenna, single piece of antenna with a with quite a long tube, quite high up. All right, is giving us these two um, two frequencies. Now we did this on the signature twelve point four, and this is what originally started my thinking because the twelve point four is literally twelve point four. Uh, meters long we've got the radials here and we've got a number of elements going up there but the main element is the 80 meter element which comes up all the way and at the top it turns over and we can tune 80 meters using this fold back but i've also by accident we got it tuned with a coil and the coils about here we got it tuned at the uh, 30 meter with 10.1 megahertz now, I did some checks this morning, and weirdly enough, we're also resonant about 8.4 and 9.6 and 10.1. So there's something else going on that I don't understand fully, but where I want to get to, and it's in to encourage you to do some experiments as well, is where do we put that coil and how much of a coil do we put on it to get the third harmonic as a double? So in other words, can you really get 7.2 and 14.2 on one element? I don't know anybody else who's done that. Because if you think about it, we could translate that now into some sort of fan dipole, couldn't we? So a fan dipole, well, let's take from 80 all the way up we want. So we might have an 80 meter element here. Well, our 80 meter element, we could do this coil business that we did like on the 12.4. Uh, that's for 80 meters. So this, the piece of coax, the center of the coax again, is gonna to go to one side and the braid of the coax is going to the other side of our fan dipole. And it's called a fan, you'll see why. So there's 80 and 30. Well, wouldn't it be amazing to get a slightly smaller element with another tiny coil nearer the end here? So we would have then 80 and 30 here and we could have 40 and 20 here as four bands on two bits of wire with just a little bit of a little bit of tubing all right now in fairness <laughs> it might be a real friggin hassle tuning the ends of these to make sure we've still got this relationship of about 1.95 to 1 as a multiplier because if we take 7.2 and multiply that by 1.95 roughly if i can get my phone out working out here let's just have a look calculator 7.2 times 1.95 1404 so it's, it's it's just under two just under two a factor of two and it would be great just to work out what that is of course on this one here the chances are we'd probably get a little bit of 15 if we're lucky. If not, we would have to add 15 or maybe add 10. But fan dipoles are great for the low bands, all right? But that's the least amount of wire I can think. And that's the fun I've been having for a couple of weeks now. I've spent all my waking hours on this whole thing. So this is a pre, if you want to see the results of this, I'm going to see if we can actually genuinely get 40 and 20 on one element with a small coil, but the small coil, as you can see here, has got to be quite high up. The coil, it says, is on the end of wire 10. And if I look at wire 10, how high off the ground? It's 5.6 meters above the ground. It's where that little dot is there, 5.6 meters. So it's pretty high up. Interesting though, and one of the reasons I do videos like this is not only to encourage people to do this sort of stuff, but there's some extremely clever people who watch some of my videos who might fully understand what's going on here. And I would love a, if someone could comment appropriately, we'll pin that to the top and you'll be able to read a really clever person. 
By the way, if you go on ChatGPT, you can query ChatGPT about this. It seems to understand. It doesn't quite know the maths. It just refers to Maxwell's calculations and the moment method. But uh, ChatGPT has been, it's kind of given me a steer, if you know what I mean. Interesting, isn't it? Harmonics and bits of wire. Okay, well, next video is coming up here. In the meantime, have a jolly good day. Feel free to uh, bookmark the channel and watch more of this stuff by hitting the subscribe, particularly if this is the third or fourth video you've, you've now watched in, in, my, in my travels around playing with RF and bits of wire and that sort of thing. All right, all the best now. Bye for now.